Hi guys, like the title says, I'm going to show you how to overclock the Ryzen 7 2700 on the Gigabyte B450M DS3H motherboard. If you've seen my other video, my last video I put up, it's how to upgrade your AMD Ryzen gaming computer in 2019. In that video I showed you how to put in the processor and how to swap out your RAM. I also got me uh, 32 gigs of RAM. Today's video is basically on the processor itself. I got the Ryzen 7 2700, which is an 8 core 16 thread. It runs at 3.2 gigahertz, boosts up to 4.1. I'm going to show you how I'm going to overclock this chip and show you how I'm going to come up with my numbers and how I know that it's going to work prime. Stay tuned and I'll get into showing you how to get it done. Like I said in the intro there, we're going to be overclocking the Ryzen 7 2700. We're going to be using a piece of software this time around. It's called the AMD Ryzen Master. Um, while I'm doing the software this time, I've already got a video up explaining how to do the BIOS overclocking on the Gigabyte B450 MDS3H motherboard. It's the same motherboard I still have. But this is a good, safe alternative if you're afraid of the bios if you're afraid to mess up something which is pretty hard to do nowadays but if you're afraid to get into the bios you're afraid to tinker around you now this software is a good alternative to where you don't have to go into your bios um, i'm going to give you a rundown of the ports that's in my system i'm running the fractal design focus g case i got the ryzen 7 2700 cpu my motherboard is still the gigabyte b450 m ds3h I'm running the XFX Radeon RX 580 Black Edition, 8 gigs of RAM on the GPU. I have G Skill Ripjaws 5 Series 32 gigs running at 3200 MHz speeds for the RAM. My storage drives, I have two of them. I got the Intel 660p M.2 1 terabyte, which is an NVMe or, uh, drive. That's my main drive. Then my backup is a 3 terabyte 7200 RPM. Had a three drive. I'm also running the Corsair RM650 80 plus gold certified fully modular power supply. And the big one that I left for last is my cooler. I'm running the Cooler Master T4 CPU cooler. I'm running this instead of the Spire cooler that comes with uh, 2700. It, it's designed to keep the temperatures a little bit cooler than what the Spire does. And it's kind of a stand-up air tire cooler, just like the EO212 is. Besides, it's a little bit shorter, and you only have four heat pipes instead of six compared to the EO212. But I went with this one because the Spire has a down-facing fan. Some guys say that will actually help keep the power delivery more cool, but I haven't never seen anybody test it. But with that fan blown over that CPU with all that heat, then it blows it out over top of them. I don't see how it could keep them any cooler. But I could be wrong on that one. But that's why I'm running this uh, aftermarket heat sink fan. I think it's like a twenty dollar. I think it's like twenty dollars. I think you can pick it up for. When that uh, my testing on it, it does does fairly fairly better than what the stock heat sinks do. And I've already got it, so I might as well use it. But yeah guys, let me play you the video that's showing you how to overclock the Ryzen 7 2700 with AMD Ryzen Master Software. I want to also show you how to make sure it's a stable overclock. You know, even though you overclock it and you think it's going to be stable, you know, after an hour or so of gameplay or whatever, it may not be stable. I'm going to show you how to make sure that it's, it's a stable overclock. So let's get into the video. And I'll show you how to get that Ryzen 7 2700 overclocked. All right, guys, to be over, to be overclocking the Ryzen 7 2700, we're going to be using a little program called AMD Ryzen Master. Click on the program. You have to give it permission to make changes. You'll see this little warning box coming up about how it overclocks and whatnot. It may do damage to your components, and AMD ain't responsible. Hit OK. Alright, when you first open it up, here's your core voltage, or your core speeds. You can see they're all running at 
3,500 megahertz, which means that uh, the processor itself is automatically boosting up. Get down here to profile one. All right, and it's set to auto, so it's whatever the CPU chooses to do with it. And right now it's up to 3.5 megahertz. You go over here to manual. Okay, and you hit this all cores. You want all cores to overclock to what you want it to be at. That little green line right there represents that. Okay, let's go down here to the CPU voltage right down here. It's set to 1. We'll add 0.35 offset to that. So that'd be 1.35. And the maximum you can set it to is 1.55, which I don't recommend that, but I want 1.35 on mine. This first quarter right here, we're going to back it out at 3200. Let's go with 4100 megahertz. Hit enter. And there it is, all quarters, it says 4100. Let's see what this does. We'll hit apply and test. It's running a stress test. Okay, and right down here it shows you that it passed the stress test. It was successful. So that means it was actually, it's actually running at 4100 4, megahertz, which is 4.1 gigahertz on all cores. Now if you question if this system, if this program is actually doing anything, we'll go over here and boot up hardware monitor. Um, let's remember now some of the stuff that we don't care about, like the Gigabyte motherboard. Uh, the only thing we care about right now is the Ryzen 7 2700. You can see the voltage is reaching about 1.33, 1.34, and we got it set to 1.35. Um, down here is your core clocks. They're all reading about four, they're over 4,000 4, megahertz. So it's about four gigahertz. If you hit that stress test button again, you'll see them bounce up and your CPU usage will go up to 100%. And it's still sticking right around the 4100, a little less. And that just shows you that what the program is doing is actually taking effect into the system. Okay, it says 4100 is good. You can see all the CPU usage just dropped back down. How's the temperatures looking? Uh, we're reading about, yeah, it's dropping now. But it looks like our temperature only reached about 66 C, which is good. Okay, 41, let's go with uh, 4150. Hit enter and an apply and test. Let's see what it does 4150. All right, so it's successfully completed at 4150. So let's take it up to 4175. Hit enter. See 4175 across our course. Hit apply and test. Um, and it said it passed at 4175. So let's go up again. Go up to 4200. Join all cores. Apply and test. And black screen doing us. That means that ain't a stable overclock. So you need to shut down and restart the system when that happens. Okay, well, uh, let's get hardware monitor open back up. Let's get AMD Ryzen Master open back up. Mm 
Okay, and you go to profile one again, because that's the one we're working on. It's set to 4200, which wasn't stable. So let's go back to 4175 and hit enter. Hit apply and test. And again, on hardware monitor, all cores are being tested. It's hitting 4160 something. All right, that time I'm saying that ain't stable. Now uh, you restart the computer again. Let's get the program to open back up. Okay, go back to profile one. 4175 wasn't stable. Let's go to 4150. All cores at apply and test. And you can see over here it's 100% on all cores and it's hitting 4130, 4140. Alright, so it's saying 4150 is stable. I don't recommend just sticking with their little stress test. I believe in really trusting the system to make sure it's going to be stable. We want to put them over here to the side. Let's, uh, this little program I like to run for a long period of time to get it to test to make sure it's going to be a stable oil clock. It's Prime 95. Hit OK. <coughs> and as you can see, we're hitting 100%. That nah, must not be stable. So let's restart again. Alright, let's get our software to open back up. Hardware monitor. AMD Ryzen Master. Profile 1. 4150 wasn't stable. So let's go with 4100 across all cores. And we're going to hit the apply button. We don't want it to run its test because we're going to run Prime 95 to test it here. Now it downloads Prime 95. All right, and we're going to hit go. Pull up hardware monitor. All cores are 100 percent, and it's hitting close to 4.1 gigahertz. And you want to run this test for 15, 20 minutes to, just to make sure. You also want to keep an eye on your temperature to make sure you got thermal headroom. That way it ain't shutting down because of the temperature of the CPU, which you get a Ryzen Master to tell you what your temperature is running up here. But it's always nice to have a second verification on that. I usually let this run 15 to 20 minutes to make sure it's going to be a stable overclock. <laughs> guys now since you've seen the video on how to overclock your cpu with the ryzen master software that should work with any cpu not just the 2700 um, it'll work with any ryzen processor or any amd processor i'm not too sure about the intel side of things but i know it will it will do any of the amd processors it ain't this just ain't specially for the 2700 it's any of them 
Um, and the third at the end, you see me run Prime 95 to stress test this. I only ran for about 15 minutes, and I sped it up because I don't want you to sit there and watch it for an hour long. You know, I'd suggest taking that Prime 95, installing it, and running it to test it. You know, I'd let it run an hour or so to make sure it's a good stable overclock and keep checking your temperatures. Make sure your temperatures ain't cutting you back. I only went with 1.35 1 1 volts. AMD recommends or says that you can go up to 1.45. I showed you in the software, it says you can go up to 1.55. Um, but the if you can get the overclocks to where, you, where you're comfortable with, with less voltage, it's better on your components. And ain't as much heat that your system has to get rid of. In that video, I have it set to 1.35. But if you look at the hardware monitor, it wasn't even pushing 1.35. It was staying down around 1.2 volts, 1.29 volts, 1.26 volts. So it wasn't even hitting what I had it set at. Which means I can run them, run them speeds with less voltage than what it's even set at. Which is a good thing. Less, the less voltage you can get there on your overclocks, the better you are. You know, um, I tried bumping it up off camera. Tried getting more out of it with a higher voltage. And it still wouldn't do it. You know, it's just, it all depends on the silicon lottery, as they say. You know, it depends on what the processors are made out of. Some, some processors just overclock better than others. What I got out of mine in that video is what I'm going to run mine at. Um, but that's going to do it for this video. I hope you learned something. I hope you learned a way to overclock your CPU without having to go into your BIOS. By running this software, once you have it set, you can just forget it. Every time you start your computer up, you restart your computer, the software will automatically engage the overclock so your computer or your CPU will run at them at that overclock speed so you don't have to worry about it. And with all that being said, if you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up, give me a thumbs down. There's that comment section. I'll go through them every Saturday on my weekly live show, Saturday morning, 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And with all that being said, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you really liked what you saw here today. And with all that being said, you all have a good day. And I'll see you in the next video or live stream.